puts the snow in his mouth so they don't see his breath. What the heck are you doing? It's 60 degrees. We're in Texas. He puts the snow in his mouth so they don't see his breath. The frustration. It is windy. Okay. Let me know when you're ready. Alright. We're on it. 150. Impact. <laughs> was that on the edge? Yeah. Well, it, but it was on the edge. Which edge? Right. Okay, so perhaps we should explain this a little bit. Yeah, okay. This particular rifle has been throwing shots like crazy. Uh, we suspected it was a scope. Why? That's why there's masking tape on the scope. We were trying to tape the turrets down. We didn't know because there are no clicks from scopes from this era. Um, so yeah, we tried to see if that would work and it's still throwing shots. I mean, this is like the Mini 14's accuracy right now. Yeah, probably worse. So, I mean, but the thing is, too, this is not a converted PU sniper. Yeah, it's original, right? All 100% original with the matching numbers to the scope, to the receiver and everything. Yeah. But, but the, the point is, back in the day, they were shooting cabbage patch ammo. Yeah. Um, At close range, but yeah. we're going to see what yeah. we can do with it. So, so, and 200 right now is pretty much the top end of what they would shoot. Back in the day, shoot. right? Yeah. Impact, solid, dead center hit. Okay, so I have to aim it all the way to the left. Nice. So what we saw earlier, uh, that second shot on the one, 150, right edge. it was on the right edge, so we compensated it towards the left. Yeah. Again? But, but that shot at 150, when it hit the right edge, like the previous shot was a good hit and our zero was a dead dead zero so yeah all right let's go 250 okay impact the impact was on the right side of the target but it was still a good solid hit okay i'll continue to aim on the left edge just to see how far we could put that and then we'll have to yeah adjust accordingly do a little bit of stalingrad windage That's it for that one neutralized. Okay. The impact was on the right side of the plate. Okay. I'm on it 300. Right on the edge, but it was right. Okay, I was actually aiming already off the plate. Alright. Impact right side of the plate. I'm aiming one plate, one target length to the left. Okay. Right edge. Right half the plate. Okay. Yeah. Earlier it was earlier it had uh, loose um, action screws. Yeah. I thought that was the thing. Nope. Tightened it up. Yeah. Didn't still work. just having a little bit of trouble getting that. This, I thought it worked for a while. As we see today, it, it doesn't work. Not not perfectly anyway. I, again though, I mean this was a wartime production, 1940, 1943 rifle. So I mean that was the height of Stalingrad. Yeah. 
uh, when they were really pushing Cranking a lot of resources. everything out, right? All right, let's try 350. Okay. okay. I'm aiming about one and a half targets to the left. Okay. I think you're on the bottom right corner on that one. Okay. But not positive, but I see a spot I don't remember if it was there before. Left edge. Okay, that was too much then, I think. I mean, I will say though, it does hit with authority. It sure does. But, so back then, snipers also didn't shoot in heavy winds like this. Yeah. That was, um, I mean, because again, the ammunition technology has gone, you know, through the roof. Yeah. Right. So what we're doing right here, I mean, yes, we're using modern ammunition that, honestly, in my other bows and a gun, with this load, shoots uh, about one inch, one inch and a half. Yeah. In this rifle, it doesn't. It shoots about three to four. Right, so the same as what you'd expect from like a surplus kind of machine gun that style era. ammo, right? Yeah. Great elevation, you're about to turn to the left. Okay. Just on the right edge. Hit. Oh man, it worked that thing. You, the impact was on the right half of the plate. Okay. Just on the right edge. Impact. Right edge. So elevation on that, since we were using a 300 meter zero. Yeah. So that was at the top edge of the plate, and it looked like it was impacting the center, right? Perfect elevation, yeah. Okay. So again, because we don't want to mess with the tape, because we've been having so much trouble with zeros, we're using kind of just a flat 300 exactly. battle zero. That being said, though, snipers back then did lock in one distance and they use hold loaders. That's yeah. it. All right, you ready? I'm ready. Impact. Okay. Uh, that skipped and went up into the burn. I saw the burn hit, but not where the uh, skip came from. Okay. Uh, and as in, in usual Soviet wartime fashion, I have brass and ammunition all laid everywhere and I don't know what is what right now unlike when I shot the Mauser video where everything was perfect and pristine. nice and neat <laughs> I believe you're just on the right edge okay elevation was good yes honestly I think it's in the same spot The impact was on the bottom right quadrant. Okay, so what, I did what you were telling me, come up about a quarter of a plate, yeah. and that was an impact. So you said bottom right quadrant. So what I'm doing right now, I'm actually trying to bracket where I was, where I shot on the last one, so I can see where my pointers, my pointer was, to where the impact was. And I'm trying to figure out where I should aim for the 500. Elevation was about a, it was at the bar, so about two thirds of a target high, windage great. Okay. Did you see it? No. Uh, it's low right. Okay. Uh, 430 position. Okay, 430. That's where that's where the impact was. Yeah. On the so on the base right off. Pop. Impact. Oh. oh. Just under it. <sighs> Didn't see it. All right, that was honestly the most challenging rifle I've shot on this course. Yeah, just because... Because of the sighting system. Yeah. Potentially a defective ancient piece of optic. Yeah. We were able to spot where we hit, yeah. and so when I was aiming at that target, I was actually not using the tip yeah. of the target. I was using the, the edge as my center point. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I think, let's see, if I was using the 
That's it. That is about two and a half targets to the left I was aiming. I'm not certain if this is an accurate representation of the accuracy. What it is more so a representation of is the telescopic optic, dis despite its, its um, weaknesses, allowed me to adjust for shots in this type of uh, uh, in this type of environmental condition. Cool. Um, would you be interested if we gave the iron the iron sights a whirl to see if we could hit the 500? Sure. Okay, so let's do this. Let's set this baddie to see how it does at 450. Okay. Let's give it a try. 500? 500, sure. And I'll try it with the uh, iron size to see how it does. Ready? Sure. Just after the right edge. I believe on the left edge. Good elevation for these. All right, so you can see the rifle is accurate. I mean, yeah. with iron sights, three, I, three shots to get on, and it's just windage. Yeah. yeah, and so I mean, 450 meters is 500 yeah. yards. Yeah. So I think definitively we can see we can say that it is an optic problem. The issue with the scope. Yeah. So well, all in all, it's still fun to get to play around with and shoot the rifle. Yeah. We actually tried it before and it was so all over the place because you were actually trying to dial it. I'm on, 150. You were about two target lengths left. What? Say again. 150, are you ready? Yeah. All right, let's do it. One five zero. Here we uh, go, baby. Send it. It's either you need to use a damn hammer on this thing, or it just doesn't work. Scope that I had for it. Oh, uh, and the wind today didn't didn't help. However, still, I mean, we did better yeah. by just locking down on one setting and shooting it out. Yeah, and just Kentucky wind to change. And th I mean, that the it's that's a lot to be said about you know why snipers back then just locked it down and did. Yeah. Windage. So what's interesting is obviously this run is going to have a lower or a worse score um, than the iron sight garbage rod. Yeah. Mosin. I will say though, this, the trigger's a lot better. I don't know if they reworked it in the arsenal. Yeah. Trigger's hell of a lot better than the other one. The cycling was so much smoother. The other one we had to use a claw hammer. Yeah. Some German snipers actually pick these up and use them. Well, a lot of them picked up the PEM snipers that were earlier production. And those actually were a little bit nicer because they were done at a time when the Russians were able to still crank out more stuff. I think uh, it's a sniper in the Eastern, Eastern Front. It follows a Josef Sepp Alleberger, who was a in the Wehrmacht. And he made his first 20 or 40 confirmed kills with a 9130. Wow. And his initial terms on the sniper rifle, it was because he was uh, in the Wehrmacht as a machine gunner. And he started seeing all the machine gunners getting schwacked by the Russian sniper. Their life expectancy was the lowest of, of all soldiers. And so when he was injured and he went to the rear and he was resting up, he was dealing with 98Ks, Mauser 98Ks that came back to the rear for refurbishment and they were refitting them and making sure they were okay. And he came across a captured 9130 uh, PEM sniper. Mm -hmm. And he, he asked the sergeant if he could, hey, could I give this a try? And he was hitting matchboxes at 100 meters. Mm -hmm. And then he was hitting a 30 centimeter by 30 centimeter ammo cans at 300 meters. They allowed him to go to the front, go back to the front with a sniper rifle serving as a company sniper. Cool. He would actually go for torso shots 
a lot of times because that was really demoralizing to your opponents that are that's pushing human waves. Um, and if you look at the targets that we're shooting today, they were torso sized yeah. targets. Sepp Alleberger actually also talks about using iron sights in conjunction with the scope because sometimes the, his first kill he was shooting through a port that was so small that he couldn't see through his scope so he had to use his iron sights. Mm -hmm. So unlike snipers nowadays, back on the eastern front they would actually rely on both the scope and the iron sights. Because the height over bore offset yep. of the optic was too much to see through the people or the, the hole he was shooting through. Exactly. And, and another for another function, as we're seeing today, the optics back then, even the top optics back then, are hard to compare with the worst optics you can get on Amazon. Yeah, worst modern optics. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, it's that's what they were working with. Uh, should we thank whoever? Oh, uh, yes, absolutely, Daniel. Thank you to Daniel for loaning us the rifle. Maybe, maybe get a reproduction optic that you can mount on and actually shoot it and have fun with it. But it, as you can see, they is still accurate. The rifle itself. Is that, I mean, three shots out there, right? 500, yeah. Not that many of our iron sight rivals did do that in three shots. No, not right? with this. Yeah, definitely not with that. Cool. Yeah. All right. Seven one six is Zero Nine Six Four Six Eight Pack Red Con One Green to Green. Top copy over. Zero Nine Six. This is Seven One Six. Roger over. One Six Zero Nine One One Pack Green Green. Over. Seven One Six. Roger over. One Six Zero Nine Two One Big Two Two Packs Red Con One. Over.